isn't this a blessed day? Thank you for joining us from outpouring from the throne room of God with Ty and Betsy Tice. Our episode today is how to overcome the doubt we all face. There's a lot of things that cause this type of doubt. There's loss of family, loss of friends, loss of jobs, catastrophic events such as floods, fires, hurricanes, etc. They all cause us to doubt our faith. These are times we just feel at a loss. We either give up, creating more uncertainty, or we cry out for help. There is one other that Betsy mentioned, and honey, that is... Seemingly unanswered prayer. That is the exact answer we prayed for as in a healing has not arrived as of yet. Let's take a look first at the doubt. In Psalm 120, uh, excuse me, Psalm 31, 22, For I have said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heareth the voice of my supplications when I cried unto you. Matthew 14, 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? This is when Peter was walking on the water when Jesus said, Yeah, come on, Peter, come on to me. But he got his eyes off of Jesus. And instead he got his eyes on the storm. And he started to sink like a rock. But Jesus reached out and pulled him up. In Luke 24, 38, we read, And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? At this point in time, this was a time when Jesus had been crucified, he had been laid in the tomb, he had risen, but they had not really seen him as of yet. And here he was standing in the room, and they freaked out because they thought it was a ghost. And he said, But the first thing he said to them is, Do not be afraid. Yet they were. Mark 9, 24, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. We all go through times of this type of doubt. And Lord, we want to believe and yet we don't believe, but we know we should believe and yet we still don't believe. Let's take a look at the scriptures for correction of this doubt that we all face. John 20, 27 says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach thither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Luke 1, 18 through 20, And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. When God brings forth a correction, there is always something that is a penalty to us because we didn't believe. And it's God's way of correcting us that, hey, for every action, there is a reaction and there is also a consequence. James 1, 5, says, if any of you lack wisdom, 
Let him ask of God who giveth to all liberally without reproach and will be given unto him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You see, when you become double-minded, it's not just that you're double-minded on that one issue. You literally become double-minded on everything, and you start questioning, and you start doubting. Betsy, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, if you would, please. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. So one of the paths of correction is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Stop trying to figure it out. Lean not to your own understanding. And always acknowledge him. And he has guaranteed us that he will direct our paths. Jude, yes. I can't help but think of the prohibition to not be wise in your own eyes. That was exactly the temptation that was given in the garden by Satan, who said, oh yes, and you will be as gods, and you will know all things. That's good. When you stop and think of it, isn't Satan trying to still do the same thing today? He wants you to be God in your own universe. Oh, we've seen that with every cult that has come along. Their presentation is always the same. It never diverts. You are God in your own universe. What a lie. And you watch any sci-fi movie today, and it is a declaration of the same lie over and over again. You're somehow superior because you're wise in your own ways. Jude 1, 20 through 23. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Honey, I'm going to ask that we do something different. And... Jude 1, 20 through 23, we're going to read it over again. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. How often do you pray in the Holy Spirit, my friend? How often do you build on your faith, saying, Lord, it's you and me. And keeping yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Onto that beautiful eternal life that he's promised us. And then it goes on. And when you've done that, then you can have compassion. Making the distinction. But others... You save with fear because they are past the point of receiving unless they're shown the fire that God presents to those who don't believe unto him, unto eternal life, but the fire and the garments that will be defiled by the flesh. James 1, 6, Betsy. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. See, driven with the wind and tossed. 
Now we reach our third point. We've looked at the doubt. We've looked at the correction. But God doesn't leave it there. There is a reward. And that's what we strive towards. Uh, Paul referred to it as pressing towards the mark. And that's what we try, uh, strive to do. Betsy, Psalm 21.21. Well, I guess she's not there, so I'm going to read. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also you shall say to the mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And God says, it shall be done. And now we go from Matthew to Mark. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Have you said something in the Lord? Lord, I have AFib, but I know you're going to heal me. And I stand in that presence. And no matter how much AFib is still here, I don't believe in what I see. I don't believe in what the doctors tell me. I believe that you're my healer and you're coming on strong day by day and my reward is a healthy heart before you. That is my reward because I stand in faith believing that your truth supersedes the world's lies. I can't help but think I'm not exactly sure where it is, but it's somewhere, I believe, in the Old Testament. And they say, whose report will you believe? And the answer is, we will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 41.10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And yea in the Greek tongue means yes, but I kind of like to read it in the old, and whenever I see the yea, I will strengthen thee. Yay! I will hold thee up. Yay! Until the devil has a major headache, and I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Mark eleven twenty two through 25. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now I notice that there's a sequence here. First it says, have faith in in God. So often we rush to the second part. We're going to just speak. Well, we've got to speak God's words. We've got to speak with his authority. It's got to be the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, not just our own presumption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the difference between real faith and what I refer to as the blab it and grab it people. Oh, they, they say all the right things, but they're saying it out of their own self. They're not saying it because God has imparted it to them. And when God imparts it to them, then that's a whole different Paul, uh, a whole different pale, because it's in his righteousness that we speak. 
It's in his glory that we speak. It's not out of our own self or our own self-awareness. It's out of our awareness in him. We go back once again to Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are invisible. I think of the thing as faith, in a way, being a placeholder. It's what we have until we see the answer. And we can see in this, if you will take the time, and we won't do it here, but if you read all of chapter 11, you will see those from the Old Testament on to the New Testament that stood and walked in faith, even though they didn't see it for themselves, they believed that substance of things hoped for, evidence yet by things not seen. But they believed and they doubted not in their heart. And God proclaims them as great people because they did what he told them to do. Jeremiah 29 11 through 13, we have a tendency of just reading the first verse. But I want you to hear the other two because they're just as important. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Here's the truth, my friends. Listen loudly. Listen clearly. His word to you is thoughts of peace and not evil. Whatever evil is besetting you isn't from the Lord. He's wanting you to step into his presence for your future and for your hope. And then you will call on me and go and pray to me. Here, once again, we come in with that communion. God wants us to have communion with him. God wants to be to have fellowship with us. And he says, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. Romans 14, 19 through 23. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Have you ever thought that what you do, what God has told you is all right to do, can actually become a sin? It is. If you do it in offense to another, I have dear brothers of all types of denominations, and they're my brothers in the Lord, de despite our doctrinal differences. We have some brothers and sisters that are Seventh-day Adventist, and they think eating meat is the most war terrible thing in the world. And if I were to eat meat in front of them, I have offended them. And what blessing of God is that for me to offend one of his children? Because I have liberty in something. Don't go and flaunt it in front of somebody else 
who to them it may be an offense because, hey, let's admit it. God knows where you are, and he's already told you what's wrong. It might not be the same thing he told somebody else is wrong. Maybe to somebody else, it is not wrong. But should they offend me? No. Should I offend them? No. Because God's way is not one of offense. God's way is one of drawing and compelling to be in front of him that whatsoever God has instructed of us, we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Until that day that we can say, doubt is defeated, correction has taken place, and I stand and my reward before the Lord, for I walk in his kingdom, not by might, nor by power, but by the strength and the presence of my Lord Jesus Christ. Be that your command today. And Remove the doubt, and God will take you the rest of the journey. God bless you. Jesus 